So welcome to Afternoons with me. I'm talking about Paralandra, a book by C.S. Lewis. It's the second book in his Space Trilogy. And what I want to talk about today is genre with regards to this book. This is the second. I love middles of series and trilogies. Uh, my favorite part of Lord of the Rings is the Two Towers because I love middles. I love Charles Dickens because most of his novels, it's a lot of middle. And middle is you know who the characters are, you were settled in, you kind of know how the universe operates that you're in, and you're seeing how things play out. Possibilities are opening up. So with regards to the space trilogy in general, it's science fiction, but is it really? It has a lot of the feel of fantasy, and it reminds me of when I took a science fiction literature class in college. And for my final paper, I covered Larry Niven and Jerry Purnell's Inferno. And I'll link to my paper in, uh, in the notes here. And my professor, when I said this is what I was going to do, he pushed back a little because he said, well, I've always considered it a fantasy novel, so if you're going to write a paper on this for the science fiction class, um, and by the way, there were two professors who uh, specialized in science fiction and fantasy at North Carolina State University when I was there, and one, the one I had for science fiction, he was kind of a scholar and fan. The other one actually was a science fiction author. And they switched off each semester. One would teach the fantasy class and the other would teach the science fiction class. In any case, uh, the professor I had thought Inferno was fantasy. And so I pushed back. And in the appendix, I addressed why I thought this was science fiction. The concept for Inferno was that the main character, Alan Carpenter, ends up in Dante's hell, literally. And it's somewhat updated to modern sins, but it essentially has the same structure, and they really do crib off of Dante's original, but making a little more vernacular modern English, um, which is what I covered in my paper. And my point was, this is how that world actually operates, and because from the perspective of the main character, that he takes a scientific point of view. That's what makes it science fiction. Similarly, in Paralandra, the main character, Elwin Ransom, he's a linguist, he's a professor, and he has found from the first book kind of how the solar system is actually operating. And it's got, you have alien sentient beings, you have different kinds of landscapes compared to the earth and geology works differently. But some of it is somewhat scientifically explained, but it's more, this is the way the world is and this is how I'm figuring it out. In Paralandra, Elwin Ransom kind of thinks through because he keeps getting echoes of classical mythology and mythology in general and legends from what he's encountering. And he thinks, what if all the myths were real, we just misinterpreted them in some way? And that's why I think this is really science fiction. The way people think this is fantasy is because it has a very, very strong religious aspect. Paralandra is the point of view of what if Adam and Eve didn't fall in the Garden of Eden? And that may come as a fantasy to those especially who are not, well, not Christian, but not religious at all. That said, you are given a structure where it really comes across as a scientific point of view. And that's why I think this really is a science fiction trilogy, even though in, in many terms it feels like a fantasy. But there are a lot of science fiction novels of, you know, of the mid-20th century that kind of have that feel. And it's not always religion. It's more of you're imbued in a particular kind of universe in that it's scientifically plausible, but it has aspects that seem and feel like fantasy. Um, so Paralander was very interesting and uh, it's, again, it is very explicitly Christian in its point of view, though that's coming from a Christian who's pretty well versed in her religion. Um, it's very funny when I come across people who don't get uh, that basically all of C.S. Lewis's fiction is 
very, very heavily Christian because they're not getting the illusions. Anyway, so now we're going to move on to book number one. <laughs>